Miss Aurora is back. Secured entrepreneurs, you all know Miss Aurora is still out here in these streets, okay? So if you hear construction going on back here, multiple languages being spoken while we're doing our thing, you know, forgive Miss Aurora. Miss Aurora's moving, okay? So in this video, Miss Aurora has got to get into the bankruptcy estate, okay? Why? Many entrepreneurs who came on board here at Aurora Day Consulting have had to file a 7, 11, or 13 this year. It was mandatory. It is mandatory for many of your businesses that really just did not do well in the first and second quarter. You were just totally wiped out and you've been trying to get it together since we know what happened with the world. I don't want to say it because YouTube likes to put them little things down there. Okay. But, but, but since that time in the world, many have been just what they say, keeping your head above water. Okay. And it has finally come to a place where you need relief, right? So the questions have been, you know, what, what is this bankruptcy estate, uh, why does it have an EIN? What, what's going on here? How is this happening? I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm not really getting any communication from the trustee of the bankruptcy court. Like, you know, I don't understand what's happening. I'm going to answer all of these questions in this video because we know that we're in the fourth quarter now. And if in fact you need to do this so that your 2025, you, you know, you can just fly right into 2025, uh, let, let, let's get it in so that we don't have to stay here too much longer. We can start moving forward as we are navigating through the bankruptcies. And I'm talking seven, 11 and 13s. Okay. Can we do it? All right. So for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you build six and seven figure tax free businesses. You heard that right. Stick around because we know that this is the Secured Entrepreneur Movement. All right now, Secured Entrepreneurs, for those of you who do not know, the bankruptcy estate is a separate legal entity that comes into existence and is created at the time in which an individual or a business files for bankruptcy. The trustee of the bankruptcy court must apply for an employer identification number. So this is an estate. It has an EIN. This is the mandate from the Internal Revenue Service. Why? Because it is a separate legal entity, it will be taxed as a separate taxable entity. Okay. That means that the, it may be necessary. It may be necessary. I'm going to get into this. It may be necessary for the trustee of the bankruptcy court to file a 1041 on behalf of the bankruptcy estate. Okay. Now what's going on here? This bankruptcy estate is now the owner of all of the debtors assets, as well as the debtors liabilities. And the estate is going to assure that all of the debtors financials are properly, correctly disclosed. Okay. This estate is going to make sure that the creditors are paid fairly because we know that sometimes, you know, we know that the bankruptcy during the bankruptcy, these assets, if you're in a seven would have to be liquidated. If you're in an 11, the assets would have to be reorganized. Okay. So the trustee of the bankruptcy court has to make sure that now this estate has ownership over whatever assets the debtor had, whatever liabilities the debtor had for proper dis distribution, for proper distribution of these things to creditors. Okay. So I just want to make sure that you understand what's really happening in this bankruptcy. Now we've had many people, and this happened to Miss Aurora. I, I filed the bankruptcy, I think it was 20, 2010 or 2011. And the trustee of the bankruptcy court 
did not find that a lot of the equipment from the gym had to be sold. So I was being called by the storage place where the equipment was being held. Listen, come pick this stuff up. We don't have a need for this stuff. And nobody came to pick this stuff up, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So, so that may happen as well. All right. That may happen. It just depends on how much debt you got out there, how much needs to be liquidated, how much needs to be reorganized. That's going to determine what is actually happening to these assets and these liabilities. And then also we know that the bankruptcy estate is going to shield your personal assets. Now we're talking about the seven now, because most people are going to indicate whether they're going to liquidate an asset or not. So like most people are going to want to stay in their home. Okay. Uh, we don't want this home up for grabs. We are going to reinstate the debt on this home. We're going, and that means that we're going to continue to pay the mortgage while we're going through this chapter seven. We don't want this liquidated. So see the, the trustee of the bankruptcy court is going to make sure your personal assets are shielded because they will not become a part of the bankruptcy estate. All right. So are we clear on that? Yes, I do believe that we are now. Sometimes there will be property and there will be income after the filing. Now, this is another reason why the bankruptcy estate has to come into creation, has to come into being, and it has to have that EIN. Okay. Because the, trustee of the bankruptcy court needs to have the authority needs to have a way to open up a bank account for the bankruptcy estate because we have to we have to keep track of you know we have to do filings you know we, we've got to pay people you know there's things going on here and the trustee may need to file a 1041 at the end of this whole thing but we need to have the ability to open up an account to account for a bank account to account for the properties that will show up after this filing for the income that will show up after this filing. Okay. So don't be, you know, uh, 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 what, 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 don't be surprised. Don't be alarmed that these things are happening. It's not illegal. Some of you felt like this must be illegal. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, this is 100% legal. You are separate from this bankruptcy estate. Okay. So please bear in mind that if in fact you as the debtor have some taxes to pay on some of this stuff, you will be, you will have the opportunity to file your 1040 while the bankruptcy estate will file a 1041. Okay. Because everything that is inside of this bankruptcy is going to run through that bankruptcy estate, uh, bankrupt, uh, bank account. And you know, the bankruptcy as a whole is totally separate from you. All right. So there's nothing illegal about this. I want to make that clear <laughs> because Many of you who email, and I want to thank you for emailing. Please continue to do so. Info at AuroraDayConsulting.com. You were under the impression that there was something illegal being done. And I believe that you were under that impression because you're getting a lot of misinformation, you know, on these social media platforms from people who never have gone through this. They don't work with people every day who do this. So you're thinking things that are just not true. It's not true. It's 100% legal for the trustee of a bankruptcy court to open up a bank account for this bankruptcy estate. There is no fraud attached to that. Just to, you know, let's be clear about that. And for those of you who are in the chapter 11, that EIN is being used to reorganize debts and continue your operations. So it's helping to manage financial separation. Okay. So let us not panic. This is normal procedure. Now let me address the personal uh, chapter seven uh, questions. Now in, in the, in the personal chapter seven, the trustee of the bankruptcy court may not need to apply for an EIN for the bankruptcy estate because all of the assets and possibly the liabilities are going to be liquidated to pay off the creditors. Okay. And so if in fact it's just a personal bankruptcy, and there's no business involved. There's not going to be any income coming in. There's no property showing up after the filing of the bankruptcy. Then the trustee doesn't have a need to apply for an EIN. Okay. So that's your personal uh, bankruptcy, your personal chapter seven. So you don't have to worry about 
uh, the, the trustee of the bankruptcy court applying for an EIN and filing a separate tax return. Nothing like that. That's not going to happen there. But let Ms. Aurora tell you about the exceptions to this. We have what we call post-petition income. Now, this is rare. This is rare. This is rare for a lot of personal Chapter 7 bankruptcies. But this is when, you know, there's income that's coming in. There's substantial income that's coming in after the filing. And in this case, yes, the trustee would have no choice but to apply for EIN, open up a bank, a bank account, and begin to manage the assets and the liabilities in a different way to assure that all of the creditors are paid okay that that is that is one of the exceptions and then the other uh, exception is business involvement if the debtor is self-employed or owns a business and the business assets are included in the bankruptcy estate then yes the trustee may have to apply for an EIN for the business bankruptcy estate. But that's that's more for uh, a chapter 11 and or a 13 when there's a reorganization taking place. OK, so I just wanted to share this in today's video so that many of you who are you know, you had a lot of confusion in these uh, with these questions as to what was taking place and whether you should file for a bankruptcy or not. And Mr. Rory is here to let you know that if you do that chapter seven, yes, you have the opportunity to bounce back more quickly than if you did the 13, because I, um, I just had another gentleman tell me that, you know, he did a 13 and he knows that for 36 months, he's not going to be able to really do too much because he is repaying creditors in a certain way. Okay. So he's not going to be able to get, you know, credit back. He's not going to be able to buy anything, you know, like, you know, with that seven, it's almost it's almost like immediately you're able to come out here and get some new credit, re, re, you know, restore yourself and, 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 you know, start again. But we're all coming into a real newness as we approach 2025. And I really hope that in this fourth quarter, you are finding your way to showing out in your business in such a way that you've never done it before, because we know that there's going to be a changing of the guards here shortly. And it doesn't matter who's in the office. It doesn't matter. You are still responsible for yourself, your family, your dreams, your goals, your visions, okay? Your gifts, your talents. You are still responsible and you have still got to come out here and conduct your business in a manner in which is going to be excellent, all right? and advantageous to you and your family. So Ms. Aurora is here to help all of the secured entrepreneurs do that. You're going to see today that there will be some member videos up. So if you, if you go down there to the join button, see what the memberships are. There are three tiers. We're going to be meeting monthly. You're going to get information that Ms. Aurora would not put here on YouTube, but they would be for the members. And then we're going to really have a massive master training going on for the sole proprietor CEO group. And if you want to join that, you will have your opportunity to do that as well. All right. So you all know you can find me, Miss Aurora Day at AuroraDayConsulting.com. And until next time, ta-ta.